are trespassing. Yeah. Please leave the area. See that? This area is under video surveillance and you have been recorded. Yeah. I am actually here at the front gate of the infamous Skinwalker Ranch. What was inside of this big backpack was this red pouch of pigment. And there's a whole big ball of red ochre sitting in there. We're gonna have to figure out a way to climb up and over this. We're in. Wow, that is so cool. Definitely a grinding stone. This is just amazing. Sure enough. Yeah, if any of the security comes out, I know all those guys, but you're right, we shouldn't trespass. <laughs> um, and the tech, the portal tech, they've got it. Yeah. There's petroglyphs right there. Look at this. Wow. So cool. Yes, look at that. Look at the red ochre pigment. Whoa. People with the severed head. That's why they call this head unders, like he's like holding it on a string. I'm actually here with Kayla. What's up guys? Uh, the entities would recognize this more as a source of protection. Yeah. This is really cool. Look at this wheel. Why did Bigelow during his era half of their team were all psychic spies doing the same stuff out of stanford right you ready there is a connection between the paranormal ufos and the myths of ancient history the clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past maybe even in your own backyard there is a connection between the true nature of our reality consciousness and the unexplained I'm Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. What do you guys think this, uh, where do you think it might be laying over on this way? Oh, that's what we've seen on Google Earth, right? Okay, so we're gonna hike over here. First time, have you been up here to try and find it yet? I have, me and my wife came up here to scout it out and it's definitely interesting. It doesn't have a natural shape to the point of the hill. Uh-huh. It's like it's cut off flat. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. So maybe something there right around or... Yeah. Yeah, we'll take a look. The area, you know, is very cool. Yeah, your line of sight up on these high points is amazing here. Cause there's like really not a lot of trees and everything so you can see forever. Totally. Shots, right? Like, you just <laughs> see those landscapes and you're like, yeah. <laughs> it totally feels like that, yeah. John Wayne. <laughs> it's the real deal, too. I'm also, yeah, I'm looking for artifacts all over up here, too. So, kind of have a nose for pottery and flaking. Right. Yeah, that's where I need to come out here with Chris more. Because that guy is a freaking hound for it. He is a rock hound for the agate and the all the stones and everything. And I'm like, that's just a rock. And he's like, no, dude, look at it. Like a dream would be for us to go with Crispy up on uh, like the the East Valley up there and look <laughs> through all those artifacts. Oh, and... Every time he's come out to the ranch and we go walk in, he finds something every time. We'll see what Caleb lets me do on the ranch when we go there tonight, how far I can wander away from headquarters, but <laughs> we'll find out. It's like a big flat piece of limestone. That's really cool. I'm just wondering how I got up here. 
Yeah, I know. There is some weird rocks and stuff around on the hilltop over here. I haven't seen anything that looks directly like an artifact. We are coming up on the point over here. Um, we'll keep our eye out. That's way cool. I wonder where the line comes off of this wheel, if it actually is going to point to where the next thing is. It is totally like a flat spot, just like you said right here on the point. Look at that. And I mean, I can't even believe how lucky we got with the weather up here. <laughs> it is a little bit windy, but it's so beautiful. It's not too hot, not too cold. And look at this totally looks like a big leveled off flat area. I feel like the alignment of the circle down below, the wagon wheel down there is a little bit, almost pointed more towards Caleb over there. There's almost like a walking line coming off of the circle pointed right up at us here. It was super windy, we just to make it down here because we noticed on this little lower edge of the mesa, there's, there's belt droppings all over the ground. Lots of wildlife coming through here. It almost looks like this little hump of stones down here might be something. I don't know. It's hard to tell. This looks natural to me. Good old earth, it looks like a circle up here but i don't know there's like a this cool flat spot and i still don't see any artifacts i would say this is not it yeah caleb just found this spot right here it's kind of more in the saddle but you're right these bigger stones look a little bit more like a worn away circle than anything else that we've seen up here but I'm a little out of breath still. <laughs> but yeah, I got these big stones. Somewhat in a circle, but it is difficult to tell. It's cool how the flowers are all growing in there. Yeah, it's kind of like you kind of look around. You got some It's like a big circle, yeah. And then uh, it does fall lot more in alignment with that line coming off the wheel down there too. I wonder if you would like follow that path through there. You know, if in some of this other area if you might find something. Might continue all the way up to something. Yeah. Because like let's I'm just throwing it out there. Potential like marker. Right. You know, if someone's like blocking the line or something. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe at some point there was more of a defined whatever here. I, I don't know. And if a lot more people come up and drive on these roads and come up to this area, then, you know, natives will come and remove things too sometimes. But it'd be surprising that they wouldn't take that one away, but they would this one if there was up here. But it's cool. I think we should go try and check out and see if the other one down there closer to the ranch is just a pile of rocks or something real, right? I think that'd be exciting. Should we head there next? So I actually also kind of called Don. Uh-huh. And he's going to meet us at the U Plaza. Really? So we'll get his perspective. And he's Very cool. With. So I thought you might enjoy that. Tell everybody who Don is. So Don Mitchell is, he's my he's Shoshone friend I was telling you about earlier. He's the one I've been having a lot of these conversations with him learning from. He made so the staff, the stick? He, he made the kill stick. Yeah. Cool, cool. So he's going to show up and come with us. So yeah, awesome. It, you know, and I already, I showed Carl some of this. It's more personal, but he, Don's also the one that gave me this. So I won't go into that, but yeah, you know, he gives me some real, he's, that's very he's cool. Some very cool, very cool. Interaction. It'll be awesome to get his perspective. So I appreciate you reaching out to yeah. him. And yeah, let's go meet Don and then uh, see what we can find. Maybe he knows some other stuff he can show us too. Yeah. That's very nice. They're, the more I shoot that thing, the more I love it. Oh yeah, that is so cool. Just the, the speed operation and everything just feels so good. That's very good. So we just met up with our friend that actually uh, made this awesome kill stick for Caleb. And we're driving now following a uh, lane on this dirt road out to where there's supposedly these clay hand-drawn 
pictographs or petroglyphs, but now we're getting on this muddy road in a spontaneous rainstorm. So we'll see how it goes. What do you think, brother? It's a little sloppy, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I say it looks like it. I can't tell which way it's going. Maybe we'll just hang out here for just a second, see if it blows over, and then hike down there. Is it very far? Also, we got to actually drive down this muddy dirt road to try and get there. So, all right, well, we'll see and make a judgment call here in a minute. The weather has cleared up. It's actually bright and beautiful now. So I've actually hopped in with Lane and uh, we've got uh, Caleb jumped in with Don in the truck behind us. They're going to try and follow. We have a couple miles to go out here. But during the rainstorm, we had an amazing conversation and got to meet uh, Don. He basically told me about this area is an area that was inhabited by little people so these are all like I hate to say the word like hobbits but this whole area and all the stuff that we're gonna go look at down here wow. if we can get there he informed me was is actually the ancient indigenous heritage site for the little people um, so what we're gonna see here I don't know if anybody has ever filmed or seen before we're gonna go try and check it out and uh, you guys get to see it too. So it'll be interesting to see <clears throat> if these were all done by actual little people that lived out here. How how old would that mean they are? Oh, insanely old. Like little people would be, that would be like prehistory, over 10,000 years or older. And how amazing is it if these are their actual like handprints and artwork that they did drawn in the clay and the mud up here. Um, what if they have stuff like tw little tool caches and little burial sites all around out here? It gets your imagination going when you see all the little caves and rock formations everywhere. is and what was going on here. It's been amazing.
drive. This is so crazy even getting out here, but we've actually arrived. It looks like everything is just right up here under the ledge. Um, what an amazing, beautiful landscape. I'm just gonna pan around. I mean, I'm all the way driving up here. I've just been looking at it. If this was the limit people, what a cool place. What a cool, cool place. So we just burned the sage. Don helped us do sort of a ceremony uh, in order to uh, invite our presence here and basically make our presence known as well as uh, sharing uh, a nice tea that he brought and blessed as well. So we've been doing everything properly before we go up here and approach this uh, sacred site. And we're gonna treat it all uh, with respect and tread lightly. And if we find any litter or anything like that, we're gonna collect it and leave it better than we found it too. This is incredible, Lane. Thanks for bringing us here. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely beautiful. Look at all the handprints. Okay, I'll show you one of that one. I think it's, uh, they might refer to as the guardian. The round one or the tall one? The round one. Let's make, let me get a little bit closer. Let me let's just, uh, let's just be quiet. Hmm. Look at this from there. There's four, five, five red men. See underneath the white hands, there's a figure, figure, and then the round figure, and then the tall figure with the white. See the red man with the horns underneath all the white hands. And then next to him in the middle, and then the round figure. There's actually several people, and then they've come and put hands over top of them. The small figure here with the larger. And even deeper underneath, layers and layers of glyphs. Putting their hands right on the faces and the body, the bodies of the figures. Absolutely beautiful and incredible.
stack up curls and you hold on to your camera and rub your hands together vigorously. Keep rubbing, keep rubbing, keep rubbing, keep rubbing until we're doing it right, it'll disappear. See that? Now smell it. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Mm. I'm looking for a piece of string or something. Okay, we don't have string. We make string. This is our offering for the Ninibis, the spirit knows that we don't want to cause offense, that we know that we come in with our all respect and for. And now with this, at times what I was told to is small pieces of steel for Ninibis, which is little people, mm. and they'll pound them into like arrowheads hmm. or trinkets and stuff for them to use and the shinier the better and now we'll go there without trying to disturb the painted area ingabito ingabito white brown and ingabito on video the four directions and the four representations one two three four okay lane let's go back over here try not to disturb this don't stand in that one right there sorry Right here, we were standing in it. Reach as high as you can, Lane. See if you can touch that Please highest see. hand. Definitely not. Okay. So let's think about this. Yeah. The ground has deteriorated some, mm -hmm. but not much. And petroglyphs, from what I know and study, going back to my school days and college days, is that those could be anywhere from at least 200 to 500 years old. Mm -hmm. Remember, this didn't, this looked like this, but that didn't look like that 200 years ago. So, the tallest ones, how did they get them? And the size of them are a little bit smaller. Lane, put your hand up by the yeah. smallest one. Go ahead. Try not to touch it too hard though, but don't touch the paint. Quite a bit smaller. See? And Lane's a fairly big man. But look how much narrower, mm -hmm. smaller that those could be. Yeah. And then with the sparrows, <coughs> they're protecting the area also. 
and that's good medicine. But what I don't see, but what I'm looking for, is I don't see any of their feathers, not one. So if you see one, looking around, pick it up. That's your offering. Carl? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. And then these, from what I know, that with that seat, and how this all is seat. Yes, sir. And so if it was running good, then that could be a blessing spring where they could get medicine water or something. Yes, sir. When it comes out like that in an area like this, because this had some type of significant meaning, this right in here. Why? And the one thing that, that catches is this was where they collected paint. Mm. And as you can see, some of them are the white paint. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a plenty. There is. And I bet you this, I mean, um, Lane, you've been here many times, or more than a few times. Mm -hmm. Is this always like this, and is it always muddy and kind of yeah. wet here? Always. So see, there's, there's kind of answers to that question, which would have attracted them here. And this might be the numerous times of when the medicine man the medicine people came not just saying boom boom but what is the significance of those I have only seen that one which was some symbolization of a guardian the, the big round the, not the big round one oh, this one next but this one that and I'll show okay. you some of my collection here when I get a minute of um of and you're gonna say wow okay <laughs> yeah um yes almost like uh notice caleb the other figures to the left of the round man there's there's uh three others there's two tall ones and the small one mm -hmm. underneath there which i i think a lot of the uh like the egyptian like and stuff they put those to scale so i don't want to leave my mark amazing just amazing yes and i think when those other ones, the lighter ones, were probably white, as white as this. Because mm -hmm. this is paint. I don't know if this is alkali or what this is, but this is also how you got white paint mixed with a little bit of fat or buffalo or uh, buffalo or bear fat and water. Mm -hmm. Or if they can let it dry into a powder, just mixed with water. Like a calcium carbonate stuff, they just paint with it. And that's, you're right, Carl, that's probably more of what this is, not really alkali, but more of a calcium, calcium Seeping deposit. out through the limestone and the sandstone. The vermilion and stuff is more of that one. But see how this one, it's kind of almost looks like a snake-like figure that's almost attached to part of what Lane is talking about. But there's other something else in there. I don't know if that's part of a rattler or what. And then the head of almost being like a horse head or a dragon head. Right. Symbol. I've never seen that one before in all the other states that I've seen. Picture puzzles. This one here. But there's a story that goes about from the Pacific Northwest on down into the Modoc, California, all the way down to Oregon, that says that there was this creature when we was talking like a munkincha, not necessarily a water baby, but that's how he, in the beginning of creation and stuff, that they were giants, and then that's how he would eat people or eat things was through his belly. Really? And then the other representation of that is it's also that's uh, where we live out here, we live at the falls and awe of, of the monster and the people that benefit from that live in the belly. Hmm. I ain't quite figured that one out yet. Like it's actually a good thing to be eaten by this entity? Not so much. Not so much? <laughs> Some did. No. But 
I'll have to, I'll have to do some of my, I'll go back to some of my SD cards and stuff and see. Because I'm trying to think that in Washington up by Tuela on a totem pole, I think I've seen something similar to that. But what would that symbol be doing here? Down in southern Utah on a place called Warner Valley at the very end of the trail is a red glyph oh, that looks very similar to that, but he has a big uh, triangular body, more like the one on the left with the white hands on his chest. But I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven figures there. That you see that up there? Some of this has been covered up. So back when big medicine, when medicine and the natives controlled the elements of nature and stuff, and they were able to fly. How did those handprints get up there and underneath those? Right, right beneath the bird. And those ones up there. All the way up. How? The only way in the feeling that I is getting is if you poop the one or something like right there too on that. That's, and then you can kind of see a figure of a person, like a ghost. Yeah. Almost like there's Which also... would be an uño or shade, because you can kind of see like his nose. I don't even know how to put words to this, you guys. This is just absolutely an incredible experience of all these swallow nests and everything up above here. And then right here where all this calcium carbonate is seeping out, where there's like a natural spring kind of coming out of the rock right here. They clearly were coming here in order to collect pigment. But how amazing to have Don here from the Shoshone tribe to be able to interpret a lot of this stuff and tell us exactly like how to approach it, how to lay the offering the proper way. We did a whole uh, spiritual thing um, down in the valley before we even approached the site. But these handprints are so small. Some of them are like little children, but they're so high up. I can't fathom how high up they got there. And these depictions of entities, there's one here, a little one here, one here, this guardian entity here, this figure here, there's another one right there. And then just looking at the red, and then you also have this figure right here with the box of fingers around it. This is like an animal. And then now when we pan back across, you look at all the handprints and everything. And then you also have uh, the white handprints over the top and then the underneath some and over some layered on top and coming back all over covering the bodies of this one and this one and all over the face of this one here all these handprints and their little tiny handprints all the way up high i would have never known without don um, telling us that this is a valley here where the little people lived all the fingerprints and handprints like the largest digit on the handprints up here is like the size of my pinky finger maybe these are little little people can't believe it. I don't understand how people can just think that this is nothing. I've seen these exact same figures and guardian entities, these red pigmented drawings, these red ochre cliff art. I've seen these same figures and shapes all over the place, down, clear down into southern Utah, into Nevada, and everywhere. Look at this amazing symbol here. Some of these handprints. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. What an incredible experience to be able to come and witness this, how it all connects, and to do it with Caleb and Don. Everybody is so cool.
crew up there looking to see if the sight glass goes anywhere. I kind of feel like it probably has light come through it that points and tells the story on the rocks as the sun comes up in the morning, probably on one of the solstices. That seems to be the case in other locations, but wow, what a sight, you guys. What an incredible sight and what an adventure to get here too. Amazing experience. What were they doing here? How did they have little tiny handprints? They're like child size. How did they get all the way up on the wall? It's unreal. This place is probably one of the coolest places I've ever been in my life. They're all child size, like tiny little handprints. They're like adult shaped, but tiny. That's so cool. See, I'm about an inch away from the rock and look at the size of my hand compared to that white one. It's like so tiny, it's like a little kid's. Look at these fingers, these fingerprints compared to mine. Look at that, it's like my three fingers compared to his. And this animal actually has horns going up here. Right? So small. All these little fingerprints are just tiny. Like, look. Almost like a raccoon paw, they're so small. I'm telling you, it's weird. They go all the way along there. All the way, how do they get up so high? What? Some of them are clear up there. Remarkable, remarkable place. And then this view, I mean, <laughs> amazing. Now we've kind of climbed all the way up. The actual petroglyphs and everything are clear down there over the, over the ledge this way. But I just wanted to show you guys up here how incredible this is. There's like these rock formations that have all been blown in from the wind and the weathering that has tunneled through and made it like this really incredible, unique landscape up here. I'm gonna come over here and look. Apparently on top, there's actually more uh, clay and paint, uh, petroglyphs, pictographs, stuff like that all over. So very cool, we're gonna go check those out. Officially up on top so we're standing on top of all the handprints and everything and the figures right over this ledge down beneath us and you're saying that this big boulder is almost set here or they started to use it for something ceremonial or sacred and so we're gonna go up there and, and uh, look at it the whole thing looks like they've been up here and like paint on it The wind is so bad. They stay out. And you can actually see the peg index from where they chipped it out right there, Steve. Totally. The whole thing is like a big 
dish. So yeah, did they lay like their children in there and do a, a ceremony? Like bless a child up on the rock? And if we go around to the other side. This little hole? Yeah. What the heck? Interesting. Right up underneath there. Look at that. Holy smokes. And the middle one. I guess the left hand most one that's still there looks almost exactly like the monster that Don showed us down there. Right. up there on top. Wow. Have you walked around all this and looked at it? No, this and is my first time I've been here. Wow. There's a cross with a dot in the center of this white stone. See that? This is, is like a circle. And then look at the, uh, I don't even want to go in the middle, but do you see the cross with the center point? Cool. Hope you see all the more definition popping out in the picture. In the camera, it totally, yeah, look. Oh yeah, you can see all that extra. It's hard to tell. No way. Yes, way. No way you just found that. Whoa. I have a gift in that kind of stuff, Carl. <laughs> That's up. rad. That's way cool. Somebody was way out here. What a spot to lose a shoe <laughs> right on the edge here. Right. How long has that been here? <laughs> here, check that out. I know. And it looks worn out on the tip. Oh, yeah. Has the nails in and everything. That's crazy. You could be, we could be holding something from the 1800s right here. So a horseshoe up here by this almost stone circle with the cross in it. And you always find these like esoteric groups show up at these indigenous sites after the fact and look for what was here mm -hmm. and you always find these freemason swords or horseshoes or or their their carvings all over in the same spot you know when they came up through these places but i don't know i almost kind of got the feeling like spanish yeah no, I 
I don't think it's, I don't know if it's that With old. the nails, that they look like yeah. square head. Hard to tell. Yeah. That's cool. Bring it back, ask somebody that knows. Yeah. Tool making. Yeah. Oh yeah. That agate. That one looks busted right in half like a grinding top tool. No way. Oh dog, you and your bloodhounds. down off of here and these what look like game trails are really interesting look at these little walking paths everywhere <laughs> climbing up here i mean i know this is where water's running off but you've got these trails going everywhere where little people were zigzagging all over this place what it's so cool well that's always the thing out here too size of that dude. Let's see if we can get uh, closer to that here. Holy smokes. He is huge. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna crawl around this other way to the side and kind of leave this snake alone. Um, I'm not exactly sure what type that is, um, but he's big. It just looks like a big rat snake right now. It's not rattling or anything. I'm definitely not going to touch it. Down there, I'm just standing up here on the rock above it. Zoom in on his head. We're going to leave it alone. snake very cool he's kind of turning around to look back at me so I think we're just gonna leave it alone cool nice to meet you I'll leave you alone. We all sort of spread out a little bit to see what ground we could cover. I decided to come down here where all, I thought all these little paths were. There's all these cool little rocks with pockets in them and stuff and snakes and things. But uh, pretty interesting. I haven't found any artifacts. There's really just a lot of stuff like there's like these big chunks of agate tool making supplies and things, but I haven't found any. There's no arrowheads or anything like that. Just cool like rocks and stones and things and formations, but the uh, pictographs, petroglyphs, all that stuff. <sighs> this place is amazing. I've never seen anything like it. All the handprints such a special place. 
so unique. I would love to find some other things, maybe like a stone circle or a few more carvings around indication of life of these little people. How cool would it be to find like a little tiny arrowhead stone tool or some like a little shoe or any kind of an artifact, maybe bones that would indicate anything other. I mean, the, the handprints are amazing all over the place, but wow, that would be so cool. It's fun to like explore and walk around, but also, you know, be respectful of the place and uh, enjoy it. There they go. Headed back out. What an incredible experience to be able to go up there. Thank you so much for taking us there. Anytime. So cool to go with Caleb and uh, Don as well. He was actually digging around in that rock and I was filming him. And then I wandered off to go look down at the trails, ran into that snake and look at what Don actually pulled out of that hole in the rock out there. Now it's his responsibility to protect these artifacts and the wildlife out here from wildfires and all kinds of stuff like that. So for him to be able to find that and then uh, the experience that we shared, the conversation that we had, I mean, to keep that very personal and private is a very special experience in my life just to sit there and talk with Don about these special places and the, the little people that lived here and everything and everything that he shared with me is just absolutely mind-blowing and incredible and uh, some of it I'm just going to keep to myself but he did tell me that I could show this to you guys and he found this and actually gifted it to me this arrowhead right up here uh, by these petroglyphs I don't even know what to tell you just look at this thing when we get back uh, where we're not bouncing around in the truck, I'll give you a closer look too. Now I am following Lane. Uh, Caleb actually had to split off to go to a family thing and then I'm meeting up with him back at Skinwalker Ranch headquarters in about an hour and a half or so. And then uh, Lane and I are actually driving down right past Skinwalker Ranch on the south side of it because we think there might be another medicine wheel out there and Lane has actually talked to the property owner and got permission for us to go out there and see if that's what it is. <laughs> People don't understand. <laughs> Look, oh my gosh, right over the middle. There we go. Skinwalker Ranch headquarters. The guys are inside right now in Homestead 1 doing the live stream for the Skinwalker Ranch insiders page that they have on their website, which is really cool. Uh, so 